Hi everyone, welcome back to Wildwood Cottage um, and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are going to be packing up some flour for storage in the pantry. Um, I have a food saver which helps me to be able to seal all foods in uh, mylar bags. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. So I hope you're all doing well wherever you are and this week has treated you well. Now, welcome to all my new subscribers and welcome to all my new watchers. It's lovely to have you here. It's lovely to have you in my little corner of the internet and uh, to see the numbers growing week after week and video after video. It's been great. Um, if you're not subscribed, it'd be great if you could just hit that subscribe button. But if not, it's just lovely to have you here. Um, yeah, as I say, today we are doing some food preservation and I've got bags and bags of bread flour. And I bought it back in uh, sort of earlier in the sort of season, sort of, I think it was May, when they were forecasting through the Ukraine war that we were going to have a grain shortage and a flour shortage and the prices were going to skyrocket. So I bought quite a bit of organic flour so I can make my own bread. And since then, I've gone on a diet where I've gone gluten, sort of grain free really, and I'm not eating a lot of bread. I probably had bread about four times in the last four months. So I thought, well, what I need to do really is to save that flour going to waste and to save it going off. Because I will start eating bread again, I want to make my own homemade bread, but I just don't want to eat it while I'm on my diet. So uh, I'm going to put it away, I've got oxygen absorbers and I've got moisture absorbers and they're going to go in mylar bags, in my food storage buckets and uh, go away for the time being until I'm ready to eat it. Because what I don't want is to get flower moths in it and weevils and find that it goes off and goes rancid because it's, a, it's money that's just, just going to go to waste. So. Yeah, and when I've got my new cook stove fitted, which still hasn't been fitted, I'm hoping to be able to bake my own bread in it. So even if I can make some and put it in the freezer and then just take it out as and when I want to use it, um, I think that'll be a good use of using up the flour. So what I've got is, I've bought one of these. It's a vacuum sealer, and I got this one off eBay. It's just a v, called a V63 and uh, it is Chinese made and uh, it's great I think I paid, paid about £18 for it and uh, I can seal my kilner jars with it which is brilliant so if we're doing dried food storage in my kilner jars it's ideal and um, because it does seal the jar and it seals it in about 10 seconds so it's brilliant I do have one of those hand pumps that you can seal the kilner jars with which if we have a power cut is going to be ideal for sealing the jars and uh, yeah, it's just a really good useful tool to have because this one, you can seal wet goods, you can seal dry goods, you can uh, vacuum seal and heat seal. So yeah, it's just a good way of preserving food. You can put the stuff in the freezer, you can put the stuff in uh, food storage boxes. It's just a great way of being able to preserve food. It does come with some bags. I'll just open the box and show you trying to juggle a cup of coffee with uh, excuse me trying to juggle a cup of coffee while opening a box but it does come with these food storage bags I have cut them down because what you can do is you can cut them down seal one side put your food in seal the other so you don't have to use the size of the bags they give you and this is the size of the bag that you get they are replaceable you can buy the stuff on a roll I can get it on my local market for about five pound a roll and uh, I think it comes off in one continuous piece so you can just cut off what you want the size you want and then seal them so you get a good few I think I've got 10 or 12 in the pack two three four five six seven no you get eight nine um, yeah, you get 12, sorry. I've used one for my tomatoes and put my tomatoes in the freezer. And this one was cut to store cheese. I managed to keep cheese in one of these bags in the fridge, opening and closing it when my husband wanted to use it. And it stayed fresh for about four months. So it's one of those things that if you don't use it, it'll go off. But this was great because I could vacuum seal it and heat seal it as well. And it just kept in the fridge and never went off. So I had the same piece of cheese, which I spent about £2 on. And we used it for um, something in the summer. And then we, both of us just went on this diet and went off cheese. And it, it was just going to go off. 
So uh, yeah, I put it in one of these bags and it kept fresh. We finally finished it last week on a pizza. So yeah, so that, that's good. So that's something that we're doing today in the kitchen. The other thing I've been working on is a video on how to make tuna can heaters for the winter. Because with all the power uh, shortages that have been forecast, I think in this country, in, uh, in the United Kingdom, National Grid forecast that we're gonna have three to four hour power cuts throughout the winter for uh, rationing of energy. So that was the sole reason why I wanted to have a wood cook stove here because here where I live, everything is electric. Literally everything is electric. Even being able to put the heating on, the hot water on, we have to power the boiler with electric. To be able to get the oil from the oil tank, to be able to put the radiators on, it's electric. So everything in this house, my cooking, my electric, my heating, my hot water, everything is electric. So if we have a power cut here, we are absolutely stumped because the only thing we can have is cold water and cold water, cold water baths. We can't even use the shower because the shower is electric as well. So when I was thinking about all these power cuts and things that have been forecast, I decided that we needed something in this fireplace in here, which I'll just turn you around and show you. There's a chair in it in a minute. In that fireplace there, and we needed a way to be able to cook, be able to keep warm and be able to warm the whole house and be able to boil some water if I needed to because last winter we had a power cut and the power cut went on for 48 hours, 36 hours I think it was and we had no heating, no ability to cook, no hot water, no ability to boil a kettle and it was just a nightmare. I did root out the camping stove, but unfortunately one of the rings had rotted, so I could only heat on one ring in the garage, in the freezing cold, in a wind tunnel. So yeah, I didn't want to go through that again this winter. So that's the sole reason that we've got this wood cook stove, is so we can be able to cook on wood, heat the whole house, because this is a 15 kilowatt stove. I'm pointing that way, because that's where it is. It's a 15 kilowatt stove. I'll pop a picture in for you so you can see it. And it means that we can heat the whole house because once this room gets warm, we can then open the door and it'll heat the rest of the house. That's the thinking. Because we've already we've also got a log burner in the sitting room next door to here, and that's enough to heat that room. So we're hoping that with the two combined, which will give us 19 and a half kilowatt output will be able to heat upstairs. That all being said, I've been making tuna can heaters, um, and that's these. And all it is, is an old tuna can, cardboard in it, and melted wax poured over the top. And then the cardboard acts as a wick. You light the cardboard, and then it generates enough heat to be able to boil a pan, uh, keep you warm, and yet yeah, they're just great. I'm hoping to be able to use them on my rocket stove to be able to do my natural dyes as well. That that'll be an option for using it when it's wet because this will generate the heat and uh, not a lot of smoke. So I've been uh, making a video about these. Um, I've just got a little bit more to do. There will be a change of outfit in it because I've done it over two days. But uh, yeah, tuna can heaters. They're, they're amazing things really because they will burn, I believe, for up to 72 hours continuously um, because the wax melts and all this is a wick and because all this takes time to burn, um, it gives you about 72 hours of burn time. So that is a brilliant, cheap, free way if you've got um, old cat sorry my brain's not working old candles it's a brilliant way of making something for free and um, just from an old discarded can and some cardboard that you can get from a recycling bin from your amazon deliveries from your food anything really that has a corrugated inside you can use for this so so that's that so without any further ado let's get in the kitchen let's get set up 
and uh, let's get on with doing our flower and I'll show you how I'm going to preserve my flower. I have done it in the past but I didn't use moisture absorbers in the past, I just used oxygen absorbers and the mylar bags and that did work very well. I've still got some there that I've had for a few years and it's still good to use. A lot of it's gluten free flour but uh, it's always handy to have in the uh, food storage bins. So let's go and have a look and uh, we'll see what we're going to get on with. Right okay so welcome back into my kitchen and um, as I said uh, just a few minutes ago we're doing food storage today and I'm rebagging ordinary household flour and um, this is one I got from Morrison's um, and I've got strong white bread flour, I've got some organic bread flour these have just been in these storage jars since I got them. Uh, it says this is good till February 23, but I would rather get it into bags. So this is a white organic flower, Churchill White. Um, local Cotswold flower, perfect for sourdough and bread making. So that's that one. I've got a few bags of that. I've got three in each tub. So that's that one and I've also got some wholemeal as well. Um, that one. So this is a stone ground wholemeal. So I've got quite a few. I've got five of the white in the Churchill brand. I've got three of the Morrisons. And I've also got some Asda to do as well, which I bought last week. So, yeah, I've got these storage bags. These are called Mylar bags. These ones have a see-through thing, so you can see what food you've got in them. I've got 100 of those. I've got these, which are oxygen absorbers, which one or two will go in each bag. And I've also got these, which are moisture absorbers, and I'll put one or two in each bag of them as well. Um, I'll probably need some more of them, but that'll just keep the moisture out, it'll stop things getting wet, and stop things going rancid. And then I'm going to put them back in these storage bins. All these are is just fat ball buckets, which you use for feeding the birds, and... Uh, yeah, I find these really good. They keep the moisture out. They've got a nice airtight lid and uh, they last for years. So if you know anyone who feeds the birds and uses these tubs, these are great bins for food storage because you can stack them on top of each other and you can get quite a few into a small space. So that's what we're doing with that. This is my food sealer that I've got that I bought on eBay. It's a great little gadget, so I'll turn you down and uh, we'll have a look at it. So yeah, this is my food sealer and it has the stop, a wet and dry, which you can change between wet and dry. Um, that's the red colour is the wet, the green is the dry. Then you have just a normal vacuum seal. Um, I'm not too sure what the difference is. Then you've got a manual vacuum seal. Then you've got a, a manual, normal vac, a manual vac which sucks all the air out. And then you've got a seal only, a seal only button which just heat seals the bag without taking any air out. And then this button here is for sealing kilner jars um, and uh, making them airtight. So. This kind of jar. Um, I've yet to try an experiment in making a gadget to seal this kind of jar, but I have seen on the internet that it is possible by creating an air seal around the jar by putting it in a plastic pot, but uh, I haven't tried that yet. So yeah, this is my vacuum sealer. This bit here is so that you can put bags on the back. Um, extend it for the size of the bag reel that you have and that just folds down flat and then I just keep it in the box so it's got two little buttons on either side one there 
and then one there. Press that in and this lid then lifts up. And in here what you've got is this is your heat strip for sealing the bag and then in here is where all the action happens taking the air out. This little button here is where you would put a pipe to do an external vacuum seal when you're using this button here and that then will just take the air out of a jar, a kiln the jar like I've just explained. Um, this plate here when you put your bag in put your bag in that little well there try and do it with one hand and then you pop your strip over the top like that and then you press the lid down and you're able to seal your food. It'll suck the air out. This allows a nice airtight, airtight environment for all the air to come out. And then you press the seal only button and then that heat seals it without letting a lot of air back in. So yeah, this strip on the front here does get very hot so just be careful you don't burn your hands. But uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. It's a great gadget. I've used it a lot since I bought it. And I think this here is a cutting Thing for cutting the bags to the right size this little lever here I think this cuts the bags to the right size like a guillotine and uh, yeah it's just generally a great gadget to use so uh, yeah let's get on with the the flour right so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to fill our bags so I've already opened one at the bottom here it's got a thing where a little knot where you can tear the bag open. But I don't like to do that. I like to just cut it where the seal is and then you can keep reusing the bag. Clean it out and keep reusing it. So I've got a funnel, one of these, which is just a jam funnel. It's what I use for putting uh, the jams and sauces in jars. That can just sit on the top like that and then I prefer to scoop things in rather than pour them in. You get less waste. I'm hoping I'm going to get most of the bag in so I know how much flour is in each one. Make sure you label your bags so you know what you've got in. I'm going to put sticky labels on mine because I find that when I've used marker pen it comes off. But just give your funnel a shake and the bag a shake. Make sure you're getting the maximum use of your bag like that so it's in all the corners so you don't get any moisture pockets. So dampen it down. You should be able to do it then without holding on to the bag because you'll have a, a stand for it then. The more flour you've got in the bag, the easier it is. Perhaps if you're using a square box, um, tub. But I'm going to get all this bag in here I think which is handy. Again, give it a tap. Because the flour condenses down and packs down really tightly, which is good. And when you get your bag down a bit more, you can pour it in. Not quite a full bag because you need to leave enough space so you can flatten it. To, I've maybe got a bit too much in there. So I reckon I've got about a kilogram in there. Yeah, you need to leave yourself enough space so you can get a good seal on the bag. So wipe your bag, get a lot of the flour out the way. Make sure your cloth's clean. And 
I'm going to put two of these in. Just move my flour out of the way. And I'm going to put one of these in. Actually, mm, no, I'm going to put two of these in. These are the uh, moisture absorbers. They're the oxygen absorbers and they're the moisture absorbers. So I'm going to do that. Right. This is the tricky bit now. Because you don't want all your stuff to come out. Let's move that over. You want to be able to put your bag flat on the worktop. So... Flatten our bag out, open the lid. Right, what you want to do is make sure you've got all the flour away from where you're going to seal because you don't want any air to be able to get in because you want it for long term storage. Now, you pop your bag in there like that, and you take this strip and you pop it back over the top like that. You need to be able to leave space for the air to be able to come out. So I'm going to suck a bit of the air out, but not a lot. So you do that. You let your lid down. Clip it in place. Make sure it's on tight. Make sure your lid doesn't open. Because that's how you're going to get your seal. Then we press manual. There you have it, there's my flour, all ready for storing. I've got a moisture absorber in there and I've got an oxygen absorber in there. And if I just cut, when I come to cut the bag open, just below where this seal is here, I can then reuse the bag time and time again um, by just wiping it out. Because it's only had dried stuff in it, um, that's going to provide a nice airtight seal. So. I'm just going to pop it back in because I don't think I left it in long enough. So let's do that again just to make sure it's sealed. Because with the great thing about this is just press seal only. Now I can hear that clicking. There you go. Ready. Open your bag. And there you go. You've got a, I've got a double seal on that now because the first one didn't seal very well because I didn't leave it in long enough. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to carry on and do all my flour. And uh, I'll show you what I've done when I come back. So see you soon. Right, okay. So I've done five bags. And I've got a bit left and I didn't think it was worth wasting a bag and putting that away. So I haven't. So what I'm going to do is if I get more flour, which I probably will get more flour, I will add that to that. Otherwise I can just keep it out for a sneaky bit of bread when I want to make some bread. But, uh, oh, I've got four bags of flour because some of them have sealed with quite a bit of air in some reason this one's got a lot of air in but I'm hoping with the moisture absorber and the oxygen absorber that it's going to take a lot more air out so I'll be able to get more in the box so I'm going to leave them for the time being but uh, yeah they fit in nicely I could probably get one more bag in but uh, I'm not going to I need to find a better way of storing them at the moment um, Maybe get some flat boxes as budget allows, but for now, these will do. Um, I've got labelled on the front, instead of labelling each bag and wasting the bags, I've just labelled the front, I've just put Morrison's bread, flour and the date in which I bagged them. So, I'm going to carry on with the rest, I'm not going to bore you, and then at the end, um, I will pop in a video clip for you of all the flour that I got done and how much I got. 
So uh, that's it for today. Thanks very much for joining me. Do like my video, please do like and subscribe. And uh, please do help me to promote my channel on YouTube by doing so. So enjoy the rest of your day, enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, I will see you again in another video. So bye for now. Bye bye. Right, so this is what I managed to achieve today from doing my flower. I've got three tubs and each tub has got five bags in. Um, I've labelled the fronts. I've got organic Churchill flower there. I've got Churchill white bread flower. And I've got Morrison's flower. So I've got about 15 kilos of flour. Each bag took roughly a kilo. And uh, that odd bag, half a bag that I had, I mixed with half a bag of the Churchill flour that I had. And I've just made that into one mix. So uh, yeah, I didn't think it really mattered as soon as they were both bread flour. Um, yeah, it may just have slightly different texture. But other than that, that's what I've got. So I'll just show you what's in the box. So because I've uh, put them all in one bag, I haven't um, labelled the, these bags, but I've labelled the tub instead. A, each bag has now got a nice strong seal on it. And uh, yeah, there's my flower. So that'll keep for a lot longer than it would have done. They've each got an oxygen absorber and each got a moisture absorber in. And hopefully they will keep for a long time. Um, there was quite a lot of air left in the bags. For some reason the vacuum sealer didn't take it out. I don't know why. But I'm hoping the oxygen absorbers will help that. So depending on the amount of air. Depending on how much you've got in the, the tubs. So I've got four in that one. And then I've got five in each of those. And then I've got five in each of those. So I've still got some flour to do. Um, but I'll do that another day as I want to get out and start doing the polytunnel. So see you next time. Bye for now.